Hello everyone and welcome to Tuesday. The other day uh, a few folks were asking me to do a review of the iPod Touch 5th Gen because I just got one and I said, you know what, sure, let's do that. So today is going to be a review of the iPod Touch 5th Gen uh, or the 5G if you want to call it that. Now if you, did, if you missed the video I did the other day, I actually had a 4th Gen for uh, the last two years. The reason I have this 5th Gen is because I took out a extended warranty plan on it and um, I could replace it for any reason, no questions asked, at Best Buy. And it just so happened that this had just come out. In fact, my warranty was about to expire, and it's going to expire in like a few days. And uh, I decided, why not renew it and get the new one? And they let me have this new version at no cost to me. Pretty cool. So I've been using it for a few days, and uh, I decided, yeah, I can do a review on this. But uh, there's not a whole lot different between this device and the previous devices. There's a faster processor, so if you want to kind of future-proof, um, then I guess this would be the device to get. And the, the biggest feature, I guess you would say, is that the screen is taller, uh, and that's on both the iPod Touch and the, uh, the iPhone 5. Now, the screen is taller, and I wish I had a, uh, a way to hook this up to a direct capture and show you, but sadly I don't. Although, to be fair, they don't actually make that because the HDMI to lightning adapter doesn't exist. You'd have to have a converter and I don't have all that stuff. Um, so the screen is taller. The screen is now 16 by 9 because up to this point it wasn't. And uh, it makes it really nice because if you're watching a video, pretty much everything this day, these days are, is uh, shot in 16 9 so you can just turn it sideways and it actually fills the whole screen. Whereas on all the other iPhone and iPod Touch models, it did not. It was always leatherboxed because it wasn't true 16 by 9 So... Um, if you look here, we'll open up an app. This is uh, Angry Birds. And Angry Birds does not fill up the entire screen because the developers have not updated it, which is completely baffling to me. But developers are getting t uh, to the point where they are updating stuff, such as Tiny Tower, which is taking full advantage of the screen. So if an app that you enjoy using is not already taking advantage of the full screen, give it time and uh, they might do that. In fact, there's uh, a group of apps I follow uh, and have called Pure Gaming. It's basically collection apps that show me uh, how much games are worth and also let me know which ones I have. And you can see it's not taking full advantage of the screen, but I actually follow the developer on Twitter, and he tweeted the other day that uh, support for the screen would be out soon. So it's something that's coming. Um, the only other thing I would think that you might be interested in for the iPod Touch 5 from a hardware point of view, although this is actually software, is Siri. Siri is not available on the other iPod Touch models, but it is available on the 5th gen. So if we hold this button... Siri, what movies are playing? I don't see any showtimes for today, but here's Jack and Diane. Okay, well apparently she was looking for today, and it is late, so she decided that since it was late, that she didn't need to tell me what the theaters were nearby. To be fair, Siri is still in beta. Still. Now, she usually does a pretty good job, and, and what I usually use Siri for is uh, reminders, uh, calendar appointments, things like that. It's really nice to pull out my, my iPod and say, Siri, remind me to do this tomorrow at this time, and she'll tell me. And uh, what's even better is that I have this synced, because you can sync this with Mountain Lion and presumably Lion, maybe even Snow Leopard. Uh, so if I set a reminder, and I don't have this with me, and you know the next day when I'm supposed to get my reminder, if I'm sitting at the computer, my computer will remind me. It'll come up with a little, it'll make a sound and come up and say, you know, you set a reminder to take out the garbage or something. So you can do that. So I have uh, stuff synced across devices, and uh, that's been really useful. Of course, you can do that uh, with iOS 6, and that's not exclusive to the iPod Touch 5th gen. You could do that with the 4th gen or probably the, uh, the earlier models. Um, the only other thing I would mention is that this thing is remarkably thin, like ridiculously thin. If you have a chance to see the device in person, touch it, see it, because it is so freaking thin. Um, I'm fairly certain it's, it's much thinner than the iPhone 5 as well, so it is like the thinnest device Apple has ever made or something like that. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, and I have a case on it, and the thing is still pretty thin. It's not as thin now, but uh, trust me, if you can see it without the case on, it's very thin. Um, so you have screen real estate in the iPod Touch 5th uh, Gen. You have Siri. 
and you have a faster processor. That's pretty much it. So, should you upgrade? Well, it really depends on what you have. If you have a fourth gen, I wouldn't upgrade. I would not spend $300 to buy this. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I got it for free, so it made sense to upgrade. Uh, now, if they would have charged me to upgrade, like if they would have charged me like an upgrade fee of like 50 bucks, I probably would have went for it. Uh, and I had the, the fourth gen. So that's kind of how much value I put on it. If you have an older iPod Touch and you're looking to upgrade, um, I would go for it. Um, you're kind of future-proofing yourself, which is what I would think would be more important. But if you spend 50 less dollars, the fourth gens are being marked down to 250 instead of 300, so maybe you want a fourth gen. If you don't care about the bigger screen, you don't care about Siri, um, you can get a nice device for $250, and that's the uh, 32 gig model. So uh, overall, I love this device. Um, I have used it for a few days, and it's, it's pretty much the same as the other device. Um, even like right before I, I turned my old device in, I synced it, or uh, what do they call it? I did a backup onto the computer, so when I got this one, I did a restore, and everything just went right back to the way it was. So it was very, very easy, and uh, I like that. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I, I like using Apple products, is because it is very simple. Um, but that's about it. It's If you have a really old iPod and you want to update, then I would say go for it because it's it's good. But if you don't want to spend the money, you could get the fourth gen. And if you already have the fourth gen, I don't know. I would wait, personally. I, I would wait unless you really, really want the big screen for some reason. And I mean, it's not that much bigger. Um, it's also not huge, by the way. It, it fits in my hand really well. Although, to be fair, I have gigantic hands, so you guys can kind of see, like, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm going to stop here, but I, I hope that that helped you in some way. And uh, if you have any questions about the device and my experiences using it, leave a comment and I will respond to you. Um, I have enjoyed using it. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, but it also hasn't been that much different than the fourth gen. The biggest advantage that I have over the old one is that I have Siri now. And I have been getting a lot of use out of Siri, but I think she would be much more helpful if I had a smartphone, which I don't. Also, by the way, iPod Touches are great for people who don't have smartphones, uh, because Wi-Fi is available uh, most everywhere, and you can download apps and, and do a lot of stuff offline, which is why I love this thing. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave me a comment if you have any questions, and uh, let's meet back tomorrow, shall we? Hey! It's actually several days later, which is why I'm wearing a different shirt, but I was editing the video that you just watched, and I realized that there were some things I probably should have pointed out that I didn't. Um, one thing that I noticed immediately is that I didn't point out that this iPod actually has a flash. It has a flash. So whenever you take pictures, there's a flash. That might be of, of some interest to you. Also, um, in the iPod Touch 4th Gen and presumably earlier models, there was an automatic lighting sensor thing, so whenever you were in like bright sunlight it would dim the display s to save battery, and whenever you were in a dark room it would detect that and automatically make it brighter. That's gone. Apparently they made the device so thin that you have to adjust the brightness manually. Personally I haven't noticed because I, I didn't care. I mean <laughs> I just keep my brightness on like somewhere in the middle and that works for me. The last thing I wanted to mention that you guys uh, may not think about, but is really important to think about, is that um, the dock connector has changed. The connector is no, is no longer a 30-pin connector, it's a 9-pin connector called Lightning, which is really cool because um, it is so small and thin, it's reversible, blah blah blah. They had to do it because they made the device so small that they literally couldn't use the 30-pin connector anymore. They had to go to a different connection. Um, there's a lot of advantages over Lightning, but the thing you need to think about as a consumer is, do I have other products, car chargers, uh, the wireless FM transmitters, docks, etc., that use that 30-pin uh, adapter. Is this going to be a big issue in my life if I get this device? Because I still have all these other devices that need a 30-pin and aren't compatible with Lightning. Now, Apple does sell a converter that you can use. Um, I forget how much they are. I think they're like uh, 20, 20 or $30. And uh, you can use those, but there's, there's going to be certain circumstances where they're not going to work very well because either like a case around it or they're not going to match um, exactly to um, whatever you're using. Uh, there's, there could be circumstances where it just doesn't work. So I wanted to point out those things. Maybe it's important to you, maybe it's not, but uh, I think that with the addition of what I just said, that makes it a uh, little bit of a more thorough review. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you guys tomorrow.